Welcome back to Fight Network. Cody Safdie here with you. Now joined on the line by a red-hot Canadian prospect who's looking to use that momentum and turn it into a very successful UFC debut at UFC on Fox 21 in Vancouver. It's Adam the Warhammer Hunter. Adam, thanks for dropping by the show today. Hey, thank you for having me. Now you're 7-1. and one. You've obviously got an awesome role going here. You're coming off a huge win, only 40 seconds into the first round over a fellow UFC veteran in Chris Dempsey. But this is almost a late booking for a lot of the Canadian fighters on this card, and so to speak, that it wasn't, you know, uh, 12 weeks out that you kind of got this call. Did you have a feeling coming off that win over Dempsey that you would get your UFC debut here, or is this fight kind of a, you know, a special surprise? Uh, no, the fight's definitely a special surprise. Uh, I figured... Uh I figured it, uh, there'd be a couple more fights there before I got the call. I, I, from what I've noticed, it's generally about 10 fights uh, the guys usually, usually have, so I figured there would be a couple more in it before, uh, before getting the call. Well, as you mentioned, a lot of guys, they, they usually have to get that 10-plus fights. But in your case, I mean, you certainly did earn your way there. You're currently riding a seven-fight winning streak. You finished six of those opponents in the first round and obviously coming off the biggest win in your last fight. Um, you're obviously someone who likes to go out there and get the finish. Is that your preferred style of fighting, or is it simply a case that usually your opponents don't have enough to offer back to you to make the fight go the distance? Um, maybe a little of both, I guess. I don't, I'm not really sure. I mean, that that is my... I mean, I, I like to finish them quick. Um, you know, I've had a lot of people come up to me after and say, you know, all that all that training and all that work you put in for only, you know, a short amount of amount of time. Um, they so they almost say like, you know, was that a waste of your time or whatever? And I, you know, and I say, well, no. All the all the training and hard work I I put in is is what makes uh, is what makes for a short fight. So, I mean, uh, you know, I, I I train to finish fights quick, and uh, and that's what I go out and do. Normally, you tend to finish your fights with strikes for the most part, but uh, you're a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu brown belt, aren't you? Oh, well, no, I got, I have a white, I got two white stripes. Two white stripes, <laughs> cer certainly on your way to that. Now, you, you start off your career in MMA, 2010. Um, you rack up a 3-1 and record right off the hop, and then you kind of take about a two-year hiatus before resurfacing over in 2013, coming back in at full force. Uh, what was the primary reason for that gap in time? Um, well, I was still I was still uh, pretty active in the military at that time. Um, so uh, between events falling through, or opponents, or or uh, or uh, or work not lining up with the date of the event, there was you know about seven events uh, that had that had fallen through for for one reason or another uh, during that period of time. But um, yeah, so a lot, a lot of it was just uh, you know I was really active uh, within the military still at that time. So it was hard it was hard to lock down uh, events. But you come back and you've looked absolutely flawless uh, since you've made your return to MMA. But now at 32 years old, you know, a lot of people, they look at the 7-1 and one record, they look at the UFC debut, and they're really easy to say, well, you know what, he, he's a young prospect. But you being 32 years old, do you feel like you're a prospect or do you feel like, you know, you're a lot more seasoned and you're in a perfect spot in your career right now to make that UFC debut? Um, I, I think I'm in a good spot, actually. Uh, if, if you look at, like, a lot of the, you know, the champions and, and all the different weight classes, their, their ages reign between, you know, 32 and, and 38. Um, I think it's I think it's a good time. Um, you know, I kind of got my, you know, the, the stuff that a young guy likes to do, I kind of got it out of my system. Um, so, you know, I'm really focused. I'm really dedicated now. Um, yeah, I think it's, I think it's, I think it's a good time. Good time. Now, coming into your UFC debut on August 27th, you'll be taking on fellow once-beaten, highly-touted Canadian Ryan Janes. Now, you and Ryan are actually very highly ranked in the Canadian regional rankings. I mean, this is somebody that you are probably going to have to fight very soon regardless. Was Ryan Janes someone that was on your list, someone that you potentially already scouted out, or was the first time you really were made aware of him when you got this UFC contract? Um, I've, I've, heard of his, I've heard of his name before. Um, uh, we were looking at some possible opponents and uh his name and a couple other names had had come across um because they were you know also also in the top 10 um but other than that i just i just heard his name i didn't really know too much or, or anything about him but um, now i do and now we're gonna fight and uh what are you what are your preliminary thoughts on him as an opponent have you been able to kind of check out any tape um no i haven't really been able to find that much but but even you know, even so, I, I don't really. Um, I mean, I just kind of, I just kind of train my game, and and I go out and I do my game. I don't really, you know, worry about the. You know, obviously, there's there's a few things that that are known about you know your specific opponent, and 
you know, you train to, to defend that. But, you know, you, you can't always just, just train for their last fight or whatever. So um, I, I just I just stick to my own game. I train what I do, what I do best, and then I just I just go out and I, and I uh, implement that in the cage. Now, being from Eastern Canada, sometimes it's not always easiest to get, uh, you know, all the matchups you'd like or as many fights as you'd like. So you've actually done a little bouncing around, jumping up between middleweight and 205 pounds. I believe your uh, knockout over Bruno Lorette was at 205. Now that you're in the UFC, is it safe to say that middleweight is your home or are you still open to maybe fluctuating around depending on how your body handles the weight cut? No, I'd, I'd rather stay at 185. Uh, and uh, and you are right, it was, it was hard to find fights out in the East Coast. So I did... Uh, you know, bounce around between a few different promotions and and uh, and between uh, middleweight and light heavyweight um, in order in order to get fights. But uh, yeah, I don't think I don't think that'll be a problem anymore. So I, I feel more comfortable at 185. Um, so I think I'm just going to stay there. Well, being a fighter on the East Coast has always been a very uphill battle because there are fantastic fighters, you know, in New Brunswick, in Nova Scotia, in all these areas out in Eastern Canada. And for whatever reason, just nobody knows, nobody really wants to fight these guys because they don't have that name and they're extremely talented. I mean, a guy like Gavin Tucker has been avoided the large majority of his career, but you were able to go out in your first time ever kind of leave Canada and take a fight when you took on Chris Dempsey over in the States. Did that give you a new set of jitters? Did you kind of think, you know what, I got to step out of my comfort zone? or was it no problem leaving Canada and fighting elsewhere for the first time? Um, it, it, it was a lot different of an experience, um, but I had, uh, you know, I had one of my good friends, Mike Fitz, with me, you know, and, and he, uh, he keeps, uh, you know, he keeps everything under control for me, so I don't really got to worry about a lot and, uh, and handles a lot of things. So, I mean, it, it definitely was a different experience, and... Uh, and uh, I think without him, it, it would have been it would have been an even an even more uh, different experience. But, uh, but you know, I, I got a good team behind me, and uh, and they take care of me. And you know, I uh, just went out and did what I did. Well, it's definitely a very good experience to get under your belt. Now you come into the UFC, you make that UFC debut, and, you know, it almost sounds cliche at this point, but we hear a lot of fighters always talking about, you know, UFC jitters, the octagon jitters making that debut. You know, I can't really ask you what it feels like because obviously you haven't been able to make that walk quite yet, but do you anticipate those nerves as something that might affect you pregame, or is fighting something that's comfortable for you? Uh, Yeah, as soon as the fight starts, I feel like I'm at home, like... uh... I'm definitely comfortable fighting. Um, you know, uh, you know, like I've said before, I, I, I don't know how, you know, with the, with the brighter lights and the, and, uh, and the louder music and the bigger crowd. I mean, I, I guess I'll find out uh, when the day comes. But I like to think of myself as a pretty, uh, pretty calm and chill guy. And uh, I feel like I should be able to handle it well. Now, uh, one of the, my last questions for you, you're known as the Warhammer. Is there any special significance behind this? Yeah, I got uh, I got that nickname. Uh, uh, I, um, well, I I was actually the day weigh-ins for a fight, um, and uh, my car at the time was standard, and it was a whiteout snowstorm. So I had driven uh, through the whiteout snowstorm uh, about an hour and a half to to a, a city so I could trade some trade some. Uh, some uh, cards for some for some Warhammer pieces. There's a there's a game called uh, Warhammer, and uh, and then I drove another hour from there after making the trade to the actual uh, city where I was fighting at through an, through the same whiteout snowstorm, and almost going off the road about four or five times, and uh, and then when I got there, my buddy was like, "Holy shit, man! You went through all that uh, just before weigh-ins." Um, so I got to the got to the right city, weighed in, and. Um, yeah, and then, so anyway, he's like, man, you are the Warhammer. And then that kind of stuck, and uh, that was pretty early on in, uh, in my career. But, uh, you know, I've been, I've been uh, you know, finishing uh, all my fights with knockouts, so, I mean, it, it kind of fits, I guess. Well, I was definitely hoping that you would go down that route because, uh, truthfully, I haven't met a whole lot of professional athletes who do enjoy Warhammer, but I, I was hoping that's what the end answer would end up being. And I was already fan of yours, but you definitely just moved up some spots in my book. So, I mean, i got to ask you, I mean, you're pretty much built like a space marine. Uh, what chapter did you play? Or were you kind of an Imperial Guards guy? Don't tell me you played the Orcs. Oh, no. Uh, definitely Orcs and, uh, and Space Wolves. 
Yeah, yeah. Space souls are good. Definitely good if you're a marine. But uh, orcs, way too many attacks. Bad armor save, but you know all those attacks coming your way with those big choppers, they get you eventually. And uh, you know what? It, it is Warhammer 40k for those of you who don't know. But we're hoping that Adam, the Warhammer hunter, will be able to change that to Warhammer 50k with a nice little fight of the night bonus or any performance bonus that he's able to rack up. But thank you very much for taking the time, Adam Hunter. If you want to see him back in action, you can do so at UFC on Fox in Vancouver, and it will be going down on August 27th. Once again, thank you for the time, and we wish you nothing but the best of luck, Adam. Yeah, thank you. Have a good day.